Welcome back, mentees, to Near Mid Condition, channel where you could be part of a positive, honest community and lay claim to some comic book knowledge. I'm your host, The Astonishing Melanie, and today let's take a look at the violent innards of Afro Samurai. Dun dun dun. Please stay tuned. Thank you to Titan Comics for sending us this review copy of Afro Samurai Volume 1. Uh, by Taka, Takashi Okazaki and this is due out December 13th um, with volume 2 coming out in January and here's the spine and the back and as it says here it's a director's cut edition because this was previously published by Seven Seas many years ago in the US there was an anime with Samuel L. Jackson voicing the main character who at this point doesn't have a name in the story He's the Afro Samurai. He's a Samurai. He's got an Afro. Okazaki says in this forward that as he was writing Afro Samurai, he was listening to um, Pete Rock, Black Star, Wu-Tang Clan, um, Slum Village, Public Enemy, etc. He was also um, in love with the 70s show Soul Train in the U.S. And so that's why uh, he's got an Afro and he looks as badass as he does. He also, the author, he loved historical um, pieces, movies about Japan. Japan. But he wanted to combine futuristic technology within uh, the story as well. And it doesn't really show up that often, but it, 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 it's great. It's seamlessly, uh, he fits it in. So as with normal samurai stories that the child sees his father get killed. His father is number one, and there seems to be some kind of magical element, almost supernatural element. If you're number one, you're the strongest man. It, with the headband, like wearing the headband adds to it. I love this part. Oh my goodness, I was reading this <laughs> during free reading in classroom, and I showed somebody, I was like, look at this, that's so cool. And a couple of times he has a reflection in one of the character's eyes. Um, of what's going on and oh man it's awesome so of course the kid who is the afro samurai um he's grown up to get revenge for his father he earns the title and the headband of number two and people are after it so they can move up to number one but of course even if it's a big gang attacking him or somebody that's really strong one-on-one -on -one, he's gonna win I love the choice of black and white so that the red really pops off the page. And also my wedding was black, white, and red. So I like that color combination. An example of something that's futuristic that's not feudal Japan is, you know, this kind of robot arm, this dude's glasses. Now our main character is not a nice guy, which you would expect, right? That he's badass, he's, he's um, got a heart of steel kind of thing. I won't spoil it, but no, he does a couple of things that I guessed. I was like, oh, that's messed up. He's not a hero in any sense so far. And that adds to the appeal of the story. I believe that it is different. You get to um, marvel at this awesome artwork and get a story that's, you know, not the basic trope. As a side note, the main character says like two or three lines the whole book. He hardly talks. So... Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a timestamp if you'd like to skip the spoilers um, and just go to the end for the overall ending. But here we go, spoilers. This guy is taking care of a little kid, right? Lone wolf and cub trope. He kills him, he was challenged, you know, he, he, he just, that's what he does, he kills. And the little boy sees it and the cycle continues, right? Okay, now in this story, um, this sister is begging her brother a younger brother not to go out dancing in a festival she's like the priest said something bad's gonna happen he's like well whatever you're just jealous that you can't dance i'm like oh, that's messed up so he runs off and she's like crawling after him um and yes something bad does happen and yes something bad does happen a group of assassins is attacking the afro samurai and for a split second i thought he saved uh the younger brother no he did not and later the sister is begging him to bring her brother back. He picks her up, uses her as a shield and throws her in front of him 
And this this picture, oh my gosh, that's messed up. We have this mystery dude who shows up and is kind of sort of pointing him the uh, the right way, you know, to get to number one to take back the headband. And but we don't know much about him yet. As he's raiding the temple, raiding is that the right word? As he's defying the temple and he's coming in, his dominant arm is shot with an arrow. So oh, he's got a handicap, but he's still awesome and he's fighting all these people. I like this one where he's tired. He's at his limit. The translation is awesome. And I'm pretty sure I would guess this is a great translation of what was written. But you psychotic old fart after people are, you know, uh, using language in the book. I just found that to put... It took me out of the story. I was like, what? That sounds like something a kid would say. So he's completely worn out. He's at death's door. And then he has to fight this guy with the teddy bear mask on. Um, who lets him live because he's like, no, you got to be stronger to fight me, right? I want to enjoy the challenge. We have translation notes in the back. I like his character design. We have his original artwork, which is cool to see and to compare to how he grew. Okasaki mentions in the Ford, like he loves that it's in this format, except he's like, oh, I'm a better artist now. Um, you know, looking back, he could see things he could have improved on his art. But he's like, you know what? That's okay. So again, this is brought to us by Titan Comics, due out December 13th. Uh, retails for $19.99. And it's actually under the label Titan Manga. 176 pages. And just to show you comparison of a uh, regular size manga and a trade paperback. It's as big as a trade. If you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching, uh, for giving this book a chance. Let us know in the comments if you're interested in picking it up, if you have fond memories of the anime, which I saw and I don't quite remember. So if you would like to make some spoiler-free comparisons to this in the anime, such as maybe the main character talks more because, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, they got to give him something to say, right? As opposed to in here where he hardly says anything. Let us know that in the comments. If you'd like to help the channel grow, consider checking out the Spread Shop that we got some high quality t-shirts and even just stickers. I love stickers. I put them on everything. Thank you so much. This is a great community. And as always, stay minty.